Hi there, it's Bill DeWeese from voiceoverrevolution.com. And earlier this week, I began a three-part series on how to transform the announcer in you to the more conversational and relatable voice talent that is more highly marketable and can make more money because that's really where the market is moving and where the demand is growing. And I introduce you to the, uh, the concept of T. PC. So you can overcome VAS, voiceover announcer syndrome, by understanding TPC, tension, projection, and control. In the last video, and if you haven't check, checked it out, you may want to go back and watch that first, we talked about tension. The human reaction to a microphone, and I looked up because there's a microphone above my head right now, but our human reaction to a script or a microphone is to first tense. Not necessarily because we're afraid, but because there is, at least at a subconscious level, we're aware that we're being judged or heard uh, at some level. And maybe it's for an audition, or maybe it's just we want to make sure that we sound good for the people who, who will hear it. So there is a tension in our body. We can feel it in the throat, and oftentimes our body will rise up slightly. And the end result, as we talked about last time, is the, the voice tends to pitch up just maybe a quarter, half an octave from our normal conversational voice. So we go from this to this. And when people hear this, they don't hear us as being in the context of conversational, friendly, hanging out. Because when you're talking with a friend or a neighbor, that's not the way we tend to, to communicate with tension. So uh, being aware was the first step. And awareness will allow us to begin to work, to work through that. So we want to move to the next, next step today, which is P in TPC, which is projection, which is closely related to tension, but let me talk more specifically. Projection meaning um, how we uh, cast our voice out, where we place it, where we put it, how strongly uh, we push it out. We project, we tend to project from our diaphragm, at least those who have been more formally trained in speaking or singing and performance. And I work with a lot of singers and actors, a lot of folks who uh, have worked on stage theater, and they're very uh, trained and used to projecting from the diaphragm, which gives you a sense of presence and strength in your voice, which can be desirable in some contexts, even in some voiceover recordings. But to get the natural conversational read, we have to move from the diaphragm to the throat. And I've talked about this before too, but I want to touch on it again because it relates so closely to the ability to transition from announcer to more relatable, authentic communicator. So uh, first of all, be aware, just like being aware of the tension, be aware that your first tendency is most likely to project your voice out, like you, almost like you're on a stage speaking to people who, multiple people who are away from you. That creates a sense of distance between you and your audience. And what you want to do is create a sense of closeness in your audience. Again, most of the time, there's going to be exceptions to everything. But when you're trying to get that more natural, relatable read, the idea is that they feel that you're having a conversation with them. So here's the paradigm shift. Instead of imagining you're pushing yourself out to your audience to be heard, I want you to, uh, to instead imagine that you're pulling your audience into you so that they want to hear you. Make them lean in to hear what you have to say. So again, instead of pushing out to them, pull them into you. And the way you do that is you soften the voice and you lessen the projection. One of the common pieces of direction I will give a voice talent that I'm coaching or working with is cut your projection in half or cut your volume in half. Because oftentimes, usually they're not even aware that they're doing it. Again, understand most of this, if not all of it, is a human natural tendency and reaction to a microphone and a script. So when we're having a conversation with a friend or a loved one, we tend to speak from up here. It's not down here to create presence and to sound full and rich. It's up here because um, we're not focused on how we sound. We're focused on the communication. And when we talk like this, it creates a smaller space, a more intimate space, at least imaginary space within the mind of the listener, where they feel they are in that space with you. It, don't push them, don't push out because you'll push them away psychologically. But if you soften it, you can pull them into that very intimate space where they begin to feel that they're a part of the conversation, which makes you believable. So your homework for P, projection, is to be aware 
that when you feel, and by the way, if you're doing like a retail spot or a hard sell type commercial, obviously this is not as appropriate. But when you're trying to do the more conversational, natural, authentic, relatable read, be aware that you may naturally go to the diaphragm and project. Simply move it from here, allow your voice to come from up here, soften it, pull them into you. And it may be for you know, different clients, different scripts, different contexts. You will have to find varying degrees of that mix. For instance, in a lot of corporate work that I do, um, I still want to keep a sense of that closeness and intimacy. But in a lot of corporate type work, they want, don't want it to sound like a hospital commercial where you're really being very soft and pulling people really into you. They, they don't want to sound overly intimate. They want to have a sense of, of confidence and credibility and professionalism which calls for a little more of the projection. So think of it as a, um, as a scale um, or a continuum between your mouth and your diaphragm. And it can be all the way up here and very soft, or it can be all the way down here and very strong and very present, or it can, be, it can vary in between depending on the need of the script. So play with that and experiment and find out how you can kind of work that sliding scale between presentational and very soft and intimate. And I think what you'll find is that it will, it will broaden your ability. It will take you from what I call a one-trick pony, where you tend to perhaps perform in a mode to allow you to vary that, to fit the script, to fit the context, which ultimately will make you more marketable, which will get you more jobs, which will allow you to make a better living as a voiceover talent. I hope you enjoy this video. Remember, my next video will we'll tackle the third and final issue of becoming uh, or giving that more natural, authentic read, which is control. And that's coming up in the next video, so watch for that. Hey, thanks for checking it out. I hope you like it. Give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon.